Hi, my name is Steven Siciliano, and today I'm going to be talking about intelligent automation with Power Automate. Before I dive in, though, I wanted to introduce you to Chris, who's going to be helping me with Q&A. How's it going, Chris? Hi, Steven. I'm doing great. Hi, folks. Uh, we'll be answering questions in the Q&A module during the presentation and also collecting a few for Stephen to answer at the end. So send your questions through to us and enjoy the presentation. Great. Thanks, Chris. And with that, let's dive right in. To provide some background on what we're about with Power Automate, our goal is to empower more people than ever to drive business value with automation. This is really important because there's a ton of manual tasks that people have to do every single day, be it processing forms, copying and data manually between an Excel spreadsheet and a legacy system. And these manual tasks really aren't a very good use of people's time. People should be able to focus on tasks that are uniquely valuable for people, like creative thinking or strategy or emotional connection. These things you don't do if you're just manually copying data every single day. So our goal is to really help everybody be more productive and spend time on more interesting human-based tasks by automating away all of those manual things that aren't really necessary. Power Automate is part of the Microsoft Power Platform. And what brings all of these different tools together is the fact that they're all low code. Whether you're building dashboards, building web and mobile applications, or designing conversational agents, all of this is possible with the Power Platform. It's also built on a number of common components like AI Builder, the common data service, and a rich set of data connectors. And I'll talk about a little bit more of these in, in the coming slides, but really the key here is that our goal is to empower more people than ever before to be able to solve any type of business problem. And Power Automate is just one piece of this broader story, but it's an exciting piece, and it's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Our goal with Power Automate is to be able to first help people who are closest to the business problem automate away the tasks that are taking them time. And that's why we have built something that is possible for any end user inside an organization to get started with in just five minutes. The end users inside organizations are closest to the business problems that they have. So they're gonna be the ones who feel the most pain in terms of needing something to solve them. But we also target people like you who are probably listening on the, on the live session today who are developers, who have experience with tools and know how to think logically about solving business problems. And a low-code platform is also valuable for you. We even target enterprise developers who are in IT, and they have a unique set of needs, but we encourage them to use the Power Platform and Power Automate specifically because there's a ton of IT-related tasks that likewise can be automated away that are just time-consuming and unnecessary. But you may be thinking, hey, I'm a developer. Why would I want something that's low code in the first place? Well, the number, the first, there's a number of reasons, but the first one is that it's very easy to get started. Learning any new programming language is gonna take time, even if it's a very straightforward language. But with a low code tool like Power Automate, you can get started in just minutes and the experience guides you through logically what you need to do without having to learn a bunch of new syntax or a bunch of new complicated concepts. Secondly, and probably even more importantly, is it's fast. With low code, you can build and iterate on solutions more quickly than ever before. And I'll share some examples of that in a minute. It's also richly debuggable because everything inside of the Power Platform runs natively in the cloud everything that happens can be logged in a way that you can always go back in time. You can literally, it's like stepping in a time machine and see exactly what was happening three days ago at 2 p.m. in this flow that failed. And you can go back, you can fix it, and you can even replay behaviors from the past. This would be possible with a pro code solution, but it'd be incredibly time consuming and difficult to build all of that by hand. And lastly, there's rich documentation that helps anybody of any skill level, including advanced developers, get started very quickly. One of the things that's unique about Power Automate though, is its deep integration into other Microsoft offerings. So if you're inside of SharePoint or OneDrive, you can select a file and there's a button right there in the ribbon called Automate. And that will let you get started with automation in just seconds. If you're working with Excel or even inside Microsoft Teams where more and more people are working these days because of the focus on remote work, 
you can get approval cards, you can have all types of interactions inside of Teams without ever even leaving your Teams client. You can even build and manage your flows from right there. And this deep integration is important because this is where people are in the future is inside of these types of environments. With Power Automate and with the whole Power Platform, you know, I mentioned why is speed important? Well, one reason speed is important is because sometimes there are crises that need to be addressed very, very quickly. And it's no different with the COVID-19 response. We were able to, in just days, help people build out solutions built on top of the Power Platform. And these solutions included all the different components of the Power Platform, but I would like to talk just a little bit about what Power Automate enabled. It enabled people to get notifications more quickly than ever. And it can sync different systems together. It can do data aggregation and forms processing. And this was used by governments, nonprofits, people in healthcare, in order to be able to solve real problems that were happening and coming up urgently. If you have a solution that takes weeks to build, it's simply not going to be possible to respond to, to needs that are this urgent and that ha come up this quickly. So with the Power Platform, the fact that you have the speed of development that low code brings you can literally be the difference between life and death. But let's uh, go on to you know, a lighter note. So one of the new things that we have in Power Automate is robotic process automation. So this has been something that's caused a lot of excitement in the industry over the past few years. Robotic process automation is about bridging from legacy systems to modern systems by automating the user interface of those legacy systems. This allows you to automate literally any type of application that you can imagine, because every application, if it doesn't have an API, is going to have some sort of a, uh, UI, or else you couldn't use that application, right? So what RPA can do is you can record the tasks that you want to perform, just like you'd record anything else inside of uh, like a VB macro, for example. So you record this task, and then you test it out, you play it back, make sure that that task is behaving as you expect, and then you can monitor and manage that task. With robotic process automation, this means that you just go through your job like you normally would, but once you've taught the system how to run that process in the future, it can automate that process on your behalf. There are two different types of robotic process automation. There's attended, which helps people by automating parts of an overall process. So attended automation is like, I'm in a call center and I want to you know, have some process that can very quickly copy a bunch of data from one spreadsheet into a form that's on the web. You can click one button and while you're sitting there, it can do that just while you're watching. The other type of automation is unattended automation. Unattended automation runs in the background automatically based on some trigger that happens. And this automation is useful for high volume processes where you don't want somebody to be involved in the loop. But it does mean that you have a higher bar to make sure that every single aspect of that process can truly be automated because you can't rely on somebody to parachute in and fix it if something goes wrong. Of course, with everything running in the cloud, we do have rich debugability, so you can always go back later and see if something went wrong. But you, know, you don't want to have to do that if you don't uh, normally need to. So there's uh, a few different important tools that I like to talk about. The first is automating Windows 10 applications. So we have this available today, and what it allows you to do is to use the uh, Windows UI automation framework. We also have the ability to automate web applications by using a framework called Selenium. And new, I'd like to announce that you can also use something called uh, uh, Win Automation to be able to automate your, uh, your Windows applications running on your desktop. So this is a really exciting announcement. Today, at Build, we are announcing that Microsoft has acquired Softomotive. And Softomotive is a leading vendor in the RPA space, used by thousands of customers. They have thousands of features that have been built over the past 15 years, including the ability to connect to legacy terminals, Java applications, Citrix, and more. And this is available to all Power Automate customers who purchase RPA at no additional cost. That means that if you're using UI flows and you're using the Selenium or the Windows automation that I just talked about, you can now start using Win Automation to automate the tasks that you have on your desktop. I'll talk a little bit more about Win Automation. Win Automation adds to Power Automate a rich development environment that runs on your desktop. This is in addition to the browser-based development that we've had uh, in the past. 
There's a low code canvas where you can drag and drop all the logic that you want to build. You can have a, a rich action library with a myriad of different actions that you can use across cloud services as well as services running on your machine. And you can build functions and variables to reuse things across all of the different processes that you have. But what's important is this is low code, which means you don't have to write logic like you would inside a Visual Studio. Although it's you can think of it like an IDE, it doesn't require a lot of effort to get started. All you have to do is just drag and drop on this rich canvas, and then you can have automation that runs on your behalf. So uh, I'll demo a little bit of Win Automation in a minute, but before I get to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about extensibility inside of Power Automate, which I think is really important for the audience here at Build. With Power Automate, we have over 300 connectors, and these connectors talk to first and third party services, everything from Adobe to Zendesk. With Power Automate, though, you can also connect to your logic that you've built and run inside of Azure. That means if you have Azure functions where you've deployed uh, advanced you know, logical things like a scheduling formula, you can do that inside of Azure functions. If you have Azure logic apps to deploy integration between backend systems, you can do that too. And if you have API management, which is really the best way to surface up your organization's APIs, you can connect to that natively as well. All of these are ways that you can have custom connectors so you can very seamlessly go from the pro development experience that Azure has to the low code experience inside of Power Automate. And the way you do that is by building a custom connector. Custom connectors are really just descriptions of how your API works. And it's based on open standards like open API. With custom connectors, just describe how the authentication works, describe the operations of your connector, you give those things friendly names so you can easily understand what they are, and then test it out and deploy it. You can submit it to certification so that way everybody in the world can use that service if you want. The other thing I want to talk about that I think is particularly applicable for a development audience like people at Build today is the development lifecycle. So you may be thinking that a low-code environment like Power Automate doesn't really have ALM or continuous integration like you'd expect, but that's not the case. With Power Automate and actually with the whole Power Platform, we support full uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, application lifecycle management based on similar concepts to what exists in Azure today. So you can set up your environments, model your logic, deploy it, test it, and monitor, just like you would with any other type of application you build, starting from Visual Studio. This is based on two important concepts. The first is environments. Each environment is a collection of resources. And you can think of you have some development environment, that's your sandbox, you build things out. And then you have your production environment, that's the main place where your application lives. They're a little bit like subscriptions inside of Azure. Every environment, uh, every organization gets at least one environment by default. You can add additional ones from the Power Platform Admin Center. The other important concept is solutions. And solution is a little bit like a package. It's the, think of it like a resource group deployment, for example. A solution moves your assets from one environment to another environment. And you can access these from inside of the Power Automate portal as well. What's, of, what's really important, though, is that there's build tools for environments and solutions. So if you want to use Azure DevOps, you want to check all of your things into source control, you can do that. And then you could automatically build and deploy your solutions using the Power Platform build tools. So this is uh, something that's been in preview for a while. And our goal is to bring this to you so that way you can have your normal pro development lifecycle alongside everything that you're building inside of the Power Platform. And with that, uh, let's take a look at the demo that will cover you know, some of these key concepts. This first scenario is a real world scenario used by Coca-Cola bottlers today. They get invoices that are submitted to them by a vendor, and these invoices are attached as PDFs. They need to be able to extract the information from these PDFs, and today, people are manually typing data into Excel based on what they see in the PDF. But with AI Builder, we can automatically extract all of the data, you know, what the invoice number is, what the case fees are, from that PDF, and then use that information inside of the flow. This flow triggers when a new email arrives, and then we take the attachment and pass it to AI Builder. AI Builder has a bunch of different model types, such as the ability to extract entities from text, the ability to extract objects from images, and more. In this particular case, though, we just need to get that invoice total 
and use that information downstream in the rest of the flow, such as inside of conditions. This particular flow actually has two separate branches of logic. On the left is what happens in a successful scenario, but on the right, we can handle errors by using an error handling step. Now, let's take a look at this flow run. Once the flow service detects that a new email has come in, you can immediately see the run history for this particular flow. Every single time a flow runs, it persists all the information about that flow, every step, what the inputs and outputs were for each of those actions, and what succeeded or didn't. You can see here the information straight from the invoice. But the scenario doesn't end there. Historically, what would happen is then the invoice information would be manually walked over to Accounts Payable, who would enter that information by hand into SAP. Now, instead, we can use UI flows to automate this entire process. UI flows simulate keyboard entry and mouse clicks into legacy applications and allow you to eliminate all of that manual repetitive data entry by just automatically taking the information from the invoice and directly inputting it into the application. This is an example of UI flows as they stand today. But what I'm really excited to talk about is the next set of features that we have coming. This is the Win Automation Integrated Development Environment. You can see here that this is a rich desktop application that you can use to build out automation. It supports a simple drag and drop interface where you can select from hundreds of different types of actions, including things built into the system, working with conditional logic, or working with web applications. These can then be put onto a rich canvas. Let's say I want to add a button click on a web form inside of this function. I can drop that on and then I get this simple interface where I can describe you know, what button I want to click on, for example. I don't have to write a single line of code to build out all of this automation. All I have to do is point and click in this interface. Win Automation is great at extracting information from a website. What this process does is it will populate an Excel workbook with information pulled from a series of web pages. I can set breakpoints in order to inspect exactly what's happening whenever Win Automation runs. For example, you can see here all the variables that are being stored and what's happening. Let's just let this finish running. As you can see, it's using the conditional logic and the loops to write all the information from the website into Excel. Win Automation can also work with legacy systems like a terminal application. This terminal application needs to be able to both receive information and send information to Win Automation. So let's take a look at it working. Win Automation again has that simple list of actions that you can configure using point and click and drag and drop. And now it's driving that application, logging in by typing text, navigating menus using arrow keys, as well as extracting information from it. In short, Win Automation can work across a wide variety of systems, allowing you to automate really any manual repetitive tasks that you have in your organization today. And with that, I'd love to dive into Q&A. So this is one of the big advantages of having a live event is we get to hear your questions and answer them live. Uh, so Chris, what are, what are people asking? What are some of the top questions that people have uh, today about intelligent automation? Hey, Stephen. Uh, so we'll start off with a couple of uh, related to Logic Apps. So what is the difference between Logic Apps and Power Automate? That's a great question. So Logic Apps is about back-end system-to-system integration. So if you have systems that are running on-premises or in the cloud, and you need to be able to move data between them, you need to be able to do data transformations as a part of those things, then Logic Apps is going to be the best way to do that. It has things like the integration account, where you can store your XML schemas and those types of things to be able to, to work with data. Uh, so it's really about back-end system-to-system -system integration. Power Automate, on the other hand, is about uh, process automation. It's about processes that users participate in, whether or not they're in SharePoint or Teams or you know any of these types of things where you have an end user, it's going to be an automation scenario. Plus, of course, we've added a bunch of new capabilities to help people to automate those legacy applications with RPA. So you know, it's a great question because 
under the covers, the engine is definitely shared. Power Automate, when it runs in the cloud, runs on the Logic App's runtime. But the really pretty different scenarios that you'd use one or the other for. Nice. And maybe that segues well into a related question that we got, which was, will the Power Automate Studio allow for code editing like Logic Apps? Uh, yeah, actually, that is something that we have planned. Uh, I don't have a date for you, but we are going to do that. And again, it's because we, we, you know, before we may have talked about this difference of like Logic Apps is for developers and Power Automate isn't for developers. That actually is not at all how we think about it. Um, so if you want to be a developer, use Power Automate, and we should give you a code editor to be able to do that. Uh, so we will we will definitely do that. Great. A uh, couple of licensing related questions. Are the RPA capabilities of Power Automate free? Uh, so the UI flows capability, so what, what we saw in the demo, that is not for free. Uh, it is a, uh, a license that you pay for. There are two different ways that you pay for it. So I mentioned attended and unattended. Uh, attended automation is $40 for a user. And unattended automation, that thing that always runs in the background, is $150. Um, so that's the kind of the cost for for RPA, and that those costs do include the new Win Automation capability. So you don't have to pay anything additional to use Win Automation as long as you have that forty or one hundred and fifty dollar license that you've purchased. Nice. And then is Power Automate included in the Office three hundred and sixty five educational licenses? So uh, Power Automate has basic functionality that is included with every Office 365 license. So whether or not you're an educator, nonprofit, in government, you can get started with Power Automate for free at no additional cost. But there is certain functionality, and you know, internally or on the website, we'll, you know, we'll call it premium functionality, that does require an additional license. So the biggest example, the one I've been talking about today, is RPA, right? That's an, that even if you have Office, if you're an educator, you still got to pay the the $40 to get started. But a lot of the things that people do with Power Automate, you can do for free inside of Office. So if all you want is you know notifications to be sent out when somebody adds an item to a SharePoint list or emails, uh, you know when you get an email from your boss, send yourself a push notification. That's what I do on my phone. So that's why it vibrates sometimes in the middle of the night. Uh, but those types of things you can do for free uh, with any of the Office uh, offerings. Nice. Uh, how secure are payloads from point to point? So everything that we do inside of Power Automate is encrypted both at rest and in transit. We only use HTTPS, which means that you know there's no worry that somebody might intercept the data maliciously and use it. However, it is important to think about security when you're building solutions. And you know, the most common way that somebody might get access to something that you have that you may not want is, is just you accidentally overshare the data that you have. So when you're build out flows, be sure not to you know, share that flow with your entire company. Because if you do that, everybody in your company is gonna be able to see the data that's inside of that flow. Uh, so you should be especially careful when you are sharing assets like flows that you're only sharing it with a security group or with an Office 365 group uh, that, that you want. One other note that's important is we also have integration with Azure Key Vault. So with Azure Key Vault, you can store things like passwords or API keys to services that are securely stored there. And then what happens is when those things are used inside of flows, be it UI flows or automated flows running in the cloud, we will actually uh, hide and, and eliminate those from all of the debugging logging that happens, which means that if you do go back in time, I mentioned you could always go back in time and see what happened, but with the secure inputs and outputs feature with Azure Key Vault, you actually wouldn't be able to see those passwords. So that's an additional added layer of security on top of the built-in security that we have. Nice. Uh, a couple of questions related to Office-related things. Can Power Automate work with SharePoint to upload a large amount of data? Yeah, so uh, Power Automate can definitely upload data to SharePoint. Uh, there are limitations with the connectors and what they can do. Um, so I'd recommend checking out our documentation that describes in detail, in painful detail, all of the different things that, that are limited in the service. Uh, but in general, that's you know a great scenario to use Power Automate for. 
Yeah, and maybe related question. There's, there seemed to be some people were, uh, someone was highlighting a gap in the capabilities of the graph APIs and what's possible via the connectors. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about like how things get added onto the connectors? Yeah, so uh, the connectors are built by us Microsoft employees, and uh, you know sometimes it can be difficult to keep up with all of the new exciting things that are happening inside of Graph. Uh, so there there may be a little bit of a lag between what Graph has to offer and what the connectors support. Uh, so we're always working on improving the the connectivity that we have to Microsoft Graph. In addition, uh, for some connectors like SharePoint or Azure DevOps, we've even added a way for you to call. Uh, by writing a little bit of JSON, any API that SharePoint supports, even if we as Microsoft haven't described it in that process that I described using custom connectors. So that's uh, kind of an escape hatch, if you will, to get access to that additional functionality. Right, and I guess the Power Automate community forums would be a good place for them to request things in the ideas section there. Yeah, that's a, that's a great suggestion, Chris. Uh, we, we have uh, thousands of ideas that people have submitted and we're always picking off those top ideas, working on them. That's one of the primary ways we actually prioritize uh, what to do as a team is based on the, the what gets the top votes on the ideas forum. Right. Can Power Automate work with on-premises exchange? So Power Automate can't work with on-premises exchange today. Uh, however, uh, Win Automation can. Uh, so Win Automation, which runs locally on your desktop, uh, can actually access any data that you have locally on your machine. So if you have Outlook synced to an on-premises exchange, you could actually use Win Automation uh, to be able to automate working with that database. So that's one of the exciting things about Win Automation um, and everything that so the soft automotive acquisition brings us is it creates a way to truly automate anything that you have available to you on your desktop. And it may be you know, not as efficient as running that automation in the cloud, uh, but you definitely can do it from your desktop. Great. Does RPA work well with browser-based apps that don't have APIs was another question. Yeah, that's another perfect use case uh, for uh, automation. And if I had a little bit more time, I would have shown that demo too mm -hmm. of, uh, of how uh, Coca-Cola Bottlers is, is doing that exact same thing. If you want, you can actually check out my MBAS session from a couple weeks ago uh, where I did that demo. Uh, but absolutely. So browser applications, sometimes they haven't been updated in 15, 20 years either. Uh, and you need a way to interact with those. So uh, today you can use Selenium or you could use Win Automation uh, to be able to integrate with those you know, legacy browser-based applications uh, to read and write data. Nice. Do you have any tips on how to do vision control and Power Automate? Yeah, so use those uh, Azure DevOps build tools that I mentioned. Uh, those allow you to store everything that you want inside of your own source code code repository. It could be Git or you know anything that you imagine. And you can then use that to deploy and manage your solutions from your test, uh, test environment uh, to production. Uh, so those allow you to really set up any type of pipeline that you'd want. And it's really you know the same type of version control you get for any of the code that you want. Great. And we like had we a couple. Time for, yeah, one more question. Probably. Just one more. Some people were wondering about the Win Automation license and how they can use it. Is it used with the trial per user RPA license? Um, and yeah. just kind of repeat that pricing model. Yeah, absolutely. So today, if you have a trial uh, for uh, Power Automate, uh, you can actually just download. If you just go to Win Automation's website, click download, click sign in with a, a Microsoft Power Automate license, and just enter your credentials, that will work. Uh, you can tell if you have a trial, if you uh, can build UI flows inside of the portal, uh, then that means that you have a trial that you can get started with. Um, so if you don't have a trial yet, just go to Power Automate, click on UI flows on the My Flows list, uh, and that can get you started. A little dialog will pop up saying get a trial. Um, if you already have a paid plan, you do have to purchase uh, specifically the uh, uh, per user with attended RPA plan. We love to have short names for our plans. Uh, and that's that's the plan that you can purchase. And if you purchase that plan as your paid plan, uh, then you get unlocked the full capabilities of Win Automation as well. That's great. Right? 
So thanks so much uh, for the questions. Uh, before I wrap up, I just wanted to have one call to action. Definitely check out the community. Uh, it's the best place that you can get started to learn more. Chris mentioned there's ideas here. Uh, there's lots of uh, communication on the blog. Uh, we have YouTube videos and channels. So there's just a bunch of different ways that you can get started uh, to integrate with other people. We even have our roadmap there. So that's my one action item. Thanks so much for listening to me virtually. And uh, if you want to check me out again, I'm here two more sessions in other time zones. So uh, thanks so much. Have a good day.